I'm the genius Asian. Welcome to the genius family. According to various surveys, only about 30% of Americans floss their teeth daily. About 70% of people comment that flossing is difficult, and 90% say that if it were either easier or took less time, that they would floss more often. One way to make this task more convenient, at least, would be to keep some dental floss, say, in a desk drawer at work, or maybe in a, some in a pocket in your gym bag. Your first step after you tear off a piece of dental floss will be to make a knot. For in, more information on how to make good knots, see the video linked below. See, this is strong enough to hold at least a two pound weight. In order to make knots this secure, see the video that is linked below. Now you can just use this loop of dental floss, moving it around with your fingers as needed. When you're at home, of course, it's easier to use a variety of methods or that might be a bit awkward when you're in a more public place like the office or gym. Another thing you can do, especially if maybe tying the knot's a bit tricky, you can take a piece of dental floss that you tore off, place the two ends over the top of a toothpaste tube, and then screw the cap back on. This will hold it very securely. We have some demonstrations of this in our other video. So you just need to wait until you've used up a toothpaste tube, and then you can cut off the bottom part, save the top part and the cap. And you know, eventually you'll have another one. And what are you gonna do then? Well, you can do the same thing. You'll and then you can have one for each hand. A way to use your dental floss so that it will not slip out of your fingers. And also, you will not have to use a very long piece of it. Next, we need to talk for a moment about flossing technique. Teeth are larger at their top end, or at the crown end, than they are further down, at the base, towards the base of the teeth. The illustration shows that in some cases, when the teeth are very close together, you may have a triangle shape there. If the teeth do have a gap between them, you have something that is more like a trapezoid shape. Most people know they have to floss their teeth up and down, but a lot of people never think about angling to the left and to the right so that they are getting the entire tooth on both sides. If the gap between the two teeth is this triangle shape with the teeth very close together, it may be better technique to move the floss in and out rather than trying to move it up and down. If you have an implant for one of your teeth, be aware that there is a bigger gap between the base of the implant and the base of the other teeth than is usually the case. So make sure that you spend extra time wrapping the floss around that implant tooth and going not just up and down, but also side to side and in and out. Another tip for good flossing is to make sure that you give yourself enough time. Don't try to short yourself on this. It's going to take a certain number of minutes each day. Let's think about how many teeth we have and how many gaps are there then that need to be flossed. You have 14 teeth on the bottom, 14 on the top. A few people, if you've kept all your wisdom teeth, you might have 16 on the bottom and 16 on the top, but that's relatively unusual these days. Okay, so if you have 14 teeth, that means you have 13 gaps that need to be flossed, 13 on the bottom, 13 on the top. Okay, you're going to have to spend probably at least four seconds for each gap in order to go both with the up and down and the left and the right motions. Now, it'll take you something over two minutes, most likely. Another thing you can do to improve your flossing technique and benefit your overall oral health is to ask your dentist for your dental records or to ask him specifically about the gums surrounding your teeth. Which ones, at which points, do the gums have what they call pockets of three millimeter or greater? Those are the teeth that you need to pay extra attention to and spend a little bit more time with trying to keep them clean. Then, if you know which teeth you're focusing on, six months later at your next dental exam, 
you can check and find out whether or not you've managed to improve those particular spots. Okay, another thing which many people are unaware of is that although they have always been told, brush your teeth, brush your teeth, in fact, you also need to be brushing your gums. So don't forget, in the case that you're using a toothbrush that may be smaller, that this toothbrush will not cover the teeth and the gums all at one go. So you will need to brush the teeth and then also go back, put the toothbrush at a 45 degree angle and go over it at the gum line as well to make sure that you're really getting into those gums. Do this for both top and bottom. If you still feel like flossing is a drag, well, you can buy a water pick. Okay? Water picks will clean out between your teeth and in your gums without the floss. It's not a substitute for flossing. It will do a reasonable job also of keeping your teeth clean. It helps. You might wonder what order you should use these tools in. Should we floss first, brush first, and then floss? Do we use the water pick before or after brushing? Here's an analogy. When you clean pans, first you will be scraping out the larger, harder material using whatever tool seems to work best for you. Then you will be sort of rinsing to get out some of the smaller particles that have not yet been scraped away. After that, you will be adding soap to your sponge and you will be actually rubbing the pan in order to get off all the fine particles and the film. So when we're talking about cleaning our teeth, we think that this ordering is logical. First you floss, which is removing larger, harder particles. Then you're using the water pick and this rinses out smaller particles, including some that might have gotten under the gums. And then afterwards, you are using your toothbrush to kind of do the final polishing. You're getting rid of any fine particles and, and film that may be remaining. And also another point about brushing last is that the toothpaste has fluoride in it. And so you are spreading this fluoride, which will help your teeth. And then it has a chance to sit there for a, a little while. So to repeat, we would do floss first, water pick second, and brush third. Another point to that is that after you do the brushing, you can rinse, but don't use the water pick after brushing because that, with its powerful stream, will rinse fluoride off of your teeth. If you ask your dentist, they may very well tell you that the ordering is really not as important as just plain doing it, right? Just making sure that you actually do floss your teeth daily, brush your teeth daily. As we said earlier, we were astounded to find out that only about 30% of people actually do floss daily and that 70% find it difficult and that 90% have said they would floss more if it were easier or took less time. This is why our video will help you in making it easier and take less time to do flossing. So while we do think that the order we presented the best sense, again, we encourage you to just at the very least, make sure you take care of, of your teeth. Share this with people who you know that need it. Leave your own genius tips in the comment section below. Don't forget, I'm the genius Asian. Subscribe for more useful videos.